Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Ryan. Psychiatry is my field and people just like you are my passion. Today, I'm going to talk about mirror neurons and why therapy can help us unlock memories and help us integrate our difficult experiences into parts of the brain where they then become a valuable asset from which we can gain insight into our favorite person, ourselves. I realized that you probably went over all of this in detail at breakfast, but you know, maybe this summary will still be a good review. So what are mirror neurons? First, neurons are simply the impulse conducting cells in our brains. From dendrites to axons, impulses flow that result in the release of chemical messengers or neurotransmitters that then flow across a gap aka synapse, and then stimulate the dendrites of other nerve cells. Mirror neurons often looked, look and act just like other neurons, but what makes them special is their response patterns. We can observe how they respond in humans through the magic of modern brain imaging. Functional MRIs, positron emission tomography, or PET scans, electroencephalograms, or EEGs, and transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, have all contributed to our current body of knowledge. Also contributing are behavioral studies on how an individual's behavior changes when they observe the actions of others. That'll make sense in a minute. Mirror neurons have been directly observed in humans, other primates, and birds. So now we know how they've been studied, but what do we learn when we study them? Mirror neurons activate when we perform an action or when we see someone else perform the same action. The neurons in the observer's brain mirror the behavior of the neurons in the performer's brain. They act or fire the way they would if the observer were performing the action themselves. That's pretty interesting, right? This mirroring mechanism is thought to have an important role in understanding the actions and intentions of others. Learning by imitation, like when babies learn from their mothers to make faces and sounds, and in empathy. Think about a time when you shared an emotion with someone else and you could see in their face that they were right there with you. We know that PET scans light up in the same areas of the brain when we really do something or when we imagine doing the same thing. The same parts of the brain get active. When we imagine what someone tells us, we can see it in our mind's eye. Mirror neurons can activate. Though more research is needed, as is always the case in science, we know that the chemical messenger oxytocin and mirror neurons are both involved in empathy and understanding the behaviors of others. Oxytocin can modulate mirror neuron activity and potentially enhance social bonding and awareness. I think all this is fascinating, but if you don't and you're falling deeply asleep, you'll probably like the next part. When we understand why something helps us, we're more likely to repeat whatever it was that was helpful to us. When people go to therapy, quality therapy, then good things happen. Therapists often work with a client to help bring perspective to painful experiences. A therapist helps people process life events. Processing an event memory means that we confront, integrate, and frame memories in ways that reduce their emotional impact and promote healing. This work is intentional and active. When a therapist connects with somebody's story, a bond is begun between the therapist and client. Trust develops and barriers fall. When I have a problem, 
I love when I can see someone connecting to what I am telling them. Their mirror neurons are responding to me. Though the human brain is very complicated, understanding some of its functions can help us see that the responses of another can physically affect us and vice versa. Cool stuff. Sometimes in therapy, memories that are locked away in the subconscious, even for years, are brought to the conscious parts of the brain to be processed. Psychologist Dr. Henry Cloud and others state that mirror neurons and oxytocin help facilitate this process. Locked up subconscious memories or other memories that are stuck in time and not worked through are important because though we are not thinking about them, experiences that have wounded us quietly affect our thought patterns, emotions, and how we behave. I like the expression, we are as sick as our secrets. Sometimes we have secrets we know about, and sometimes we don't recall them at all, as we have tucked them away, or as I said, lock them away in the subconscious. We do this to protect ourselves. At the time of the injury, we didn't have the needed resources or help that we needed to deal with them. Instead, they set up camp, probably in the hippocampus structure in our brains. With the right support, either from therapy, a wise and caring friend, or God, hurt and stuck places in our minds begin to open up to other parts of the brain. With work and healing, empathy and guidance, it is a beautiful thing to see these locked away experiences come out of the darkness and into the light of consciousness. As they do, they start losing their power over us. What was a harmful thing to think about once can become a springboard for new strength and insight. Now these memories are released to start sharing space with other regions in the brain. The painful life experience becomes part of the past and not part of today. Also, meaning and understanding can be brought to the experience. We can integrate it into our value system and the way we make judgments. Integration makes us stronger and more able to make good decisions. Our decisions are no longer guided silently by injury. They are a conscious choice. That is a great change. New insight is incredibly valuable, and new insight is irreversible. Another expression I like is that injury happens in relationship and healing happens in relationship. Man wasn't made to do life alone. You weren't made to do life alone. We need each other, and when we care about one another, good things happen. Mirror neurons help humans connect and empathize. That is why they are important. If you are struggling with anything, seek out help. I encourage you to find good help. Some people don't even know the basics for giving safe support. For instance, I was once in a group with a woman who could not understand why conversations needed to be kept confidential. Not great. Trained professionals, mature spiritual leaders, or older friends who have done work to heal their own wounds are likely to bring comfort and good care. Your helper should want to listen a lot and give you only the advice you ask for. Trusting them to keep your situation confidential is also a must. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed learning a little about mirror neurons and how they can play into good therapy and healing. There's a scripture that says we are to weep with one another. When we do, we probably have a lot of mirror neurons firing. Stay reflective and have a compassion-filled day. Thank you.